everyone, it's Kristen Solomon here. I'm the director at Blackfish and I'm excited to welcome you all to the first show of the new year. Happy New Year. It's year 2022 and we're excited to welcome um, our four new members in the new year. We have tonight with us Anjanette Escobar and Benjamin Mefford, Hector H. Hernandez and Eddie Reed. Um, and so I'm gonna let them tell you all about their work. We're gonna give you a virtual tour like we do. We will be open tonight from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. if you wanna stop by. We're all wearing masks and being distant and careful to protect one another. Um, and if you can't make it down tonight, you are welcome to come and visit us Tuesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Those are our winter hours for the public. And also, uh, if you're not feeling comfortable coming out, we do have a 3D model on our site that you can check out all the work. Um, and we've got some great imagery and stuff. So please go to www.blackfish.com and check it out. And thanks for tuning in. And I am going to turn it over first to AJ and Jeanette. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is AJ or Anjanette Escobar and my work um, that I'm showing is uh, an exploration of my personal identity and heritage as a Mexican-American uh, citizen of the United States. Um, I, uh, uh, my work is very personal. It's about um, kind of my upbringing in the Rio Grande Valley in South Texas, and um, also my culture as a Mexican Catholic. Um, my work is, um, I explore my religious cultural identity through my work. I often will use body imagery, um, and Milagros as a way to uh, connect to my physical being, um, my being a person in this world with culture and heritage and stories. And um, I treat my work oftentimes as religious objects. And so they have a certain, um, sanctity to me. Um, this piece that you're looking at here is called Ma Madre Sagrada, which means sacred mother. And it is a holy water font. And really it's a, a dedication to all of my four mothers. And in some ways, um, the earth as well. Um, I oftentimes will use only parts of the body in my sculptures and in my artwork um, because they, I would like, I'm trying to capture the idea of the milagro, the miracle. Those are, uh, milagros are these little charms that are really votives um, that are placed at the, um, on the altar of the Virgin Mary and in, um, as a promise to, uh, to honor her if she um, hopefully grants miracles in the form of prayers. Um, my pieces are often, I, I treat them like almost like religious objects. Uh, so oftentimes there's a lot of symbolism in them. Some of the symbolism is uh, are symbols that I make up. Like for example, this, this hand with the flames, to me that really is a beacon of hope and optimism. It's called esperanza y optimismo, which means hope and optimism. And um, the English title is respair, which is a new word that I learned and it means new hope. It's kind of a torch for me. Um, I often make work about my mother, my grandmother, my daughter, um, and myself as um, our family's 
oldest female um, and they're 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 packed full of energy and the energy is love I want my culture to be seen in this light as a culture that is rich with memory and family and sacredness uh, the pieces over on this other wall are uh, have a lot of painting in them oftentimes I cannot help myself I was trained as a sculptor and I really cannot help <laughs> but to put 3d objects on painting sometimes like this piece here that you see which is called La Soñadora, which means the dreamer. And I will sculpt objects and stick them on my painting. So I just can't help myself. Um, so these, again, are very Milagro-esque. And um, they're sort of like eyes in the sky. And to me, that symbolizes the world watching. And um, they're watching this dreamer and their dreams unfold and and this dreamer's imagination escaping um, sort of what is already predestined for them. Um, this is my favorite piece in the show right now and it's called Girl with Devil Mask and it really is an homage to Frida Kahlo. Uh, she painted um, a painting called Girl with Death Mask. And I, uh, I pretty much set it up very similar to hers. I painted myself as a child in a devil mask. And I set it in the desert southwest in New Mexico where I was born, White Sands. Um, and I even included a little Mexican jaguar uh, which Frida actually had in this lower right corner. These pieces over here are called Las Fantasmas, or the ghosts. <clears throat> and they really are, um, they're very Frida-esque as well. I was looking at a lot of Frida's dresses, and oftentimes when... Um, I hear people express their love of the Mexican culture. I oftentimes feel like, oh yes, we, we love the costumery, the colors, the food, um, the culture, but sometimes I feel like the love of the Mexican people is sometimes absent. And so I painted these as ghosts. This is uh, the title piece for the show called Casa Escobar, and this is probably the most personal of all of the pieces in the show. This, uh, this house represents my house, my grandmother's house, and um, each one of these, these images represents a memory for me growing up in my grandmother's house, and again, I painted myself as a child. Oftentimes when I dream, I am a child in my dreams. And um, the dreams almost always occur at my grandmother's house. These also look like Loteria cards, which is a Mexican bingo game, and uh, which I played a lot as a child. And the numbers on the card sort of represent uh, different ages that I had some very specific memories um, at about my family. It's a super personal piece and sometimes I get teary when I'm explaining some of the images. You'll have to come down and talk to me about them. <laughs> And this is an installation uh, titled Ex Voto. And um, 
They are like giant milagros, really, giant <laughs> votives. Um, and in Europe, when I visited Spain and Portugal, uh, I was blown away by the ex votos in the cathedrals and in the churches that people would go and place there um, with these very important prayers for healing um, and healing, you know, spe specific health issues, um, problems in their lives, and um, they represent miracles or the hope for miracles. And there's, there's my show. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, AJ, very much. Congratulations. Thank you. We're going to hear, meet Eddie Reed and hear about his paintings. Hello, everybody. First of all, welcome to Blackfish Gallery. And I'm uh, very proud to be here. Uh, my show uh, really is a uh, narrative to explain the work. It's pretty straightforward. I uh, pursue a question. And the question is, um, why do we continue to, uh, to behave and do things, the big we, when uh, we have plenty of precedences uh, to prove to the counter? Uh, for example, why do we insist on labor strife? Why do we insist on racial strife? Uh, why do we insist on dividing people up in terms of importance? Uh, black artists over here, white artists over there. Back a funny story, when I first, when I came to Portland, um, one of, a major gallery, I won't name it, uh, looked at my work and basically said, you know, we don't show your kind here. That was their words exactly. So, um, but nevertheless, that's the point. My show is entitled The Mission, and the mission is to change that narrative. Um, as you can see, uh, there's much uh, here to it, each piece, for example, this this one deals with the strife and challenge of, of the ignored children, who the, the real victims, when families die, when parents die, uh, who looks out after the children. Um, and as we go on down the line, one of the things you'll notice is that there are no uh, specific faces in the work, and that's a politic. Uh, cow pie that I choose to steer away from. Um, people think want to want to easily get distracted and uh, say, uh, "Well, you know, you're blaming this group or that group," but I want them to stay on point and stay with the message. Uh, you'll notice also the iconography in the work. Uh, these are uh, sacred images taken from uh, several my own uh, uh, heritage, which is. Uh, out of Africa. I'm of the Yorubu group. My uh, grandmother, Native American imagery as well. My grandmother was raised me and uh, she was a, she was half uh, Choctaw Indian. Uh, big, the big story there as to how that came about. But I think for those who know African American history, it's a common story. Um, and as we, we move on through, this one is probably a high, one of the highlight pieces. You'll notice that the background imagery is actually Portland last summer, or two summers ago, when you had your so-called riot. <laughs> and, but what was interesting to me in all of that is what the protests were about and how far back those issues go, thus the dates you know, on the sides. Uh, labor strife. Uh, this, pardon me, this one deals with the, that, and gun violence, which has plagued all neighborhoods of color, uh, not just in the United States. I just returned from, from Europe, and uh, it's, an, it's a longstanding issue there as well, and that's the title of this piece, is I Can't Save You Now. And, uh, the uh, images in themselves, you'll notice the, uh, the snake image is a highly sacred image. It stands for resilience, 
and uh, determination in the face of strife. And then we bring you to the last piece, which uh, really exudes a lot of hope. Uh, this one is entitled Respect Yourself. And uh, one of the things to notice that it is repeated a lot in my paintings is the use of the sacred heart. Um, the idea that um, through it all, we can uh, have a positive determination to bring about change. And that's the message in the work, is uh, asking the big question, why can't we change? Why do we struggle with issues, homelessness, etc.? when at the same time, we launched a telescope that costs $347 billion, but yet we can't get people out of tents off the streets. Hmm, interesting question. But anyway, thank you. And as being an artist, I get to ask those questions. And I'm quite proud to do it. And I'm quite proud of Blackfish for giving me a forum. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. I'm proud to have you. <laughs> Hello, uh, I am Benjamin Medford. Uh, I have been keeping an eye on Blackfish for over a decade since I moved to the Portland area, and so it's just uh, being able to join as a member is quite uh, uh, moving. It, you know, it just kind of feels like a big moment for me to get to be in this show, especially with these other three amazing artists. Uh, so I'm very excited to be here and be uh, able to share my work. Um, I play with materials. Um, a lot of my work has a sort of a mixture of organic and geometric content. Um, uh, I use natural materials so you can kind of see that you know, most of these works are, are uh, very muted colors because um, that's just you know, what, what we often find in nature. Um, for some of these natural materials, so, uh, and they're structural, so they are all kind of helping me work through either just trying to work through um, all kinds of different problems that just kind of get stuck and cycle through in my head, and sometimes those are problems of physics and, um, you know, just how, how are our bodies able to function, you know, the magic of um, or biological structures and things like that, and just physical structures, uh, and and sometimes they're they're more social. But um, um, you know, this this material is felted wool. Uh, it's just raw sheep's wool that's been cleaned and it's just been felted. So it's very intensive, uh, hyper focused process of just taking a, a special needle and poking at this thousands and thousands of times, it compresses the fibers together. And, uh, and, and this form is an infinity form. It's a Mobius strip. So if you were to trace along one side of this, you actually can just kind of keep tracing it forever because there's really only one side. Uh, there's only one side of this whole sculpture. Uh, so Mobius strips are fun. Lots of people play with Mobius strips. Uh, sort of my interest in this one was uh, playing with this you know the concept of infinity and, and timelessness with this um, material that feels very uh, sort of flesh-like. You know, wool is close to the flesh of a sheep, and and it's just got this organic uh, temporality to it. That, that, that I feel like it just that that contrast is a really that's that's one of those puzzles that my brain is always trying to work through and unspin. This is, um, this, <laughs> I feel like it's kind of funny. Um, this is more of a, a, a social response and the art world response. There, there was a, a couple of years ago, there was a, a highly publicized event of somebody selling a banana duct taped to a wall at an art fair for uh, something like $100,000. And uh, so just, you know, the ridiculousness of it is, it's just, it's so funny to me, um, and uh, so this was me trying to sort of process that, like, you know, is that art? How is that art? And and uh, you know, how do I feel about that? And and so taking this stone and and carving a green banana out of it, um, 
I, just kind of makes me laugh. <laughs> and you know, and that work, which which went for this astronomical price, and uh, you know, and is gone, you know, within a couple of days, versus something that'll uh, you know be around for thousands of years. Uh, uh, this, especially, so this is carved in granite. Uh, so this granite erodes at a rate of one inch every 10,000 years. So this sculpture will probably last at least 5,000 years. And uh, it's, there's, there's, so I, I, I'm attracted to the, these, these very different materials. You know, this, this hard material that will last, you know, almost forever and, uh, you know, versus very soft and, and uh, fibrous materials that, you know, might last a few decades, but, but are much more vulnerable. Um, so just playing with those ideas of time and uh, and just conceptually, I, I think chains are very interesting because they they are they have such opposing um, uh, things imbued with them because they 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 are so restrictive and and uh, you know they're they're terrible to be you know to be locked in chains is a horrifying image to us, but. But they're also it also creates a bridge and and you know when I'm thinking about this I'm thinking about sort of our human bodies how we are kind of anchored to the ground at all times but also sort of held up by the air uh, in our bodies that lifts us up and we kind of float around and uh, it's, there's sort of a magic to that that I don't really understand um, so similarly. Uh, this is an attempt to, uh, th this is a process I developed that is, uh, so this is just cotton string. Uh, and I, I came up with this process of wrapping the string around itself in such a way that it became structured and uh, rigid and could stand up on its own. Uh, so that was sort of just, you know, how is DNA, you know, this, this flexible fiber, this microscopic flexible fiber, how does that translate into us, you know, having such solid form and being able to do such amazing things and impact the world around ourselves? Um, so I'm, I'm very excited to be able to share that, that process here. Um, it takes forever. You know, this is, this is about a mile of string and, you know, it's just wrapping string around itself one, you know, one little loop at a time uh, takes forever <laughs> but uh, so then again that's sort of this this time factor where you know these very time intensive processes um, you know the, whether carving stone or working with these softer materials it takes a lot of time but also you know some of these will last a long time and some of them won't uh, this one similarly is another one made out of uh, felt felted wool it just has a nice, this is, this is the, the raw material. And it's just uh, lots and lots of processing. This is another sculpture of the cotton string. And this is a, uh, uh, this one is the sort of round two where I refined my process a little bit. So there's actually considerably more strength in this version than the hanging one that we just saw. Um, so I, I'm excited to do, do more, more with this process, but uh, it, it, it's, it, it takes, you know, months of, uh, you know, a couple hours at a time here and there. So, and then uh, this is the only brightly colored artwork that I brought. Um, and this one is more of a social, uh, trying to understand, kind of similar to the banana duct tape to the wall thing. It was just this phenomenon of uh, blockchain technology and non-fungible tokens. Um, so this is my, you know, these like these children's blocks with NFT and you know, blockchain. And it's a pretty simple translation, but just kind of playing with the language and the words and, and um, the ridiculousness of that whole phenomenon, and uh, yeah. <laughs> so that is, uh, those are the works from my show, so thank you very much. That's great, Benjamin, thank you very much.
We're going to talk with Hector H. Hernandez next. Yeah. Oh. Good evening. And yeah, good evening, Lance, <laughs> and thank you for having me here. It's an honor to be part of this exhibition as well. And, um, and yeah, I have the opportunity to present a series of works that they are related to the, uh, the mural um, approach that I have in my uh, artwork along with the small pieces. Um, in a way, what I try to do is to convey um, images or um, elements that reflect uh, social change and internal changes as well, or personal changes. So I start with this uh, image that is related to the earthquake in Mexico City that happens in 1985. I was there and I witnessed the second earthquake that was the replica the following day after the big one. So and see the collapse of buildings and people in panic screaming and trying to um, run for their lives. Uh, it was um, a very uh, intense experience for me in which I uh, put it in, in terms of um, a dimension of um, changes uh, of individuals and, and collectivities as well. So um, if we don't change, so Mother Nature is going to take care of that. So because uh, either way we change or, or they, they make us change. So this is um, a series of um, hearts that I did and what I try to uh, reflect in this image is, um, or this sculptural piece in ceramics, is um, the elements of the heart as an internal uh, part of our um, lives that is related to love. But sometimes this heart is armored or in this kind of like a mechanical or industrialized um, uh, aspect um, that uh, uh, reflects in one way or another and, um, and the concerns that we have and the fears that we have and then how we ended up being encapsulated on the industrial world uh, and the sake of safety. But, it's, but anyway, we, we have to change at one point. So um, another series of hearts that I did, pretty much I addressed that issue as well. So uh, uh, it's, there's a series of hearts as well. So in this piece that I have here is, um, um, a drawing that I did for this sketch uh, uh, for the mural that is on display at Oregon State University. The title of this work is uh, Our Universe, Our University. And what I try to reflect on that is um, the diversity that we have in our society and the context here of the society that we have in the, in the United States. Uh, at the same time, that we have elements from the mother culture of this land that they are related to native cultures, um, Native American cultures, and also other cultures from other parts of the world that they've been contributing to the uh, rich uh, cultural life and vibrant life of the United States. We have these elements that um, um, are related to uh, in a symbolic way to this uh, door that is open and we have this flow of, of immigrants coming. Um, first, these immigrants are re depicted as cacti uh, because they have to en uh, endure, you know, very harsh conditions uh, in their journey. And then this um, um, cacti becomes uh, immigrants that they ended up heading towards a better future. So basically that we have here at the, at the horizon. Uh, we have here the mother culture represented in this um, old lady that is up in the arms um, in a welcome um, attitude. And also we have, on the other hand, you know, the, mother, the, the new modern culture of the United States that is a mixed blood uh, person that is the process of the mixing of the different races that is taking here also place in the United States. And so we have elements here of the society, the contemporary society, you know, the colonization process along with the conquest. So for some groups of some nations as well, uh, but that is the result of what our society is, uh, has going through, you know, and, um, 
but in the hope that at the end we will have a better future. And again, this also um, mural is related to change. So how we can make that change through education. So that's why these people, some, some of these people are pursuing education. This building is uh, the, um, representing the Oregon State University building. And when some of the migrants are pursuing that education and reflects you know, the desire of um, this internal change. We are not able to change if we don't educate ourselves. We don't pursue education. And that is the most important aspect that we can do is through education and our change uh, that we have to go through. So at the top, we have the Hail Bob comet that passed through when I was painting that uh, when, and, and also when I was doing this sketch. And this um, Hail Bob at the beginning was, you know, coming to the solar system. I did that. This project was done when the Hail Bob went around the solar, uh, the, soul, uh, the, the sun and going back to the outer space. So I put it that because, you know, the comments are messengers of, um, of um, news or sometimes have omens. But in this case, what I like to say is this is a good omen because the sun is the new sun, the new era, and this is the dawn of a new era that we are experiencing. So this is my hope. So if we change in that way, in a positive way, yeah, we will have a better society. If we don't change and we don't educate ourselves, uh, we, we don't expect that we will have a, a better, uh, bright future either. So, um, going back to the small format, so I did this series of uh, prints in which I was, you know, puzzled about this um, writing system from the Mayas that recently, well, historically, they've been able to decipher and they are coming now with, you know, the the messages or the information that uh, this grinding system is uh, containing. And what we have here is how this grinding system is depicting the same kind of problems. So I substitute some of the elements here or some of the um, sections of the grinding system with contemporary image of the Maya people and how the Jaguar and Dark Forces are threatening this and the news here uh, representing, you know, the, the information um, um, uh, format that we have now in the newspapers. So, so here I have this combination of and um, also syncretism process that we are experiencing. So we don't know until the few years in the future or or 100 years in the future on this, how this syncretism is taking place. But for now, I'm playing with, you know, combining these images and these symbols from uh, the Oriental Dragon and the uh, Mayan symbols of, um, that uh, mimics a little bit this kind of image of a dragon as well. And so these powerful religious images or mythological images, I rather say, that they are um, present in the life of the the, in Mesoamerica as well in, um, in uh, the Oriental culture. So in the same way that I was approaching this on um, print and in Taljo, I decided to go and experiment with this technique because I've been working with ceramics. So I decided to do this on um, carving uh, different tiles and then fire them with different glazes with the same kind of approach, so adding a little bit more of elements. Um, but basically, this is the same content that I'm playing with. So uh, that, in other words, is the mixing of the different cultures uh, from around the world, you know, from distant places. So this other piece that I have here is, again, a series of hearts. So basically, this is the last piece that I did of this series of hearts. And this is uh, the title of this is from the bottom of my heart. So this is a homage to a famous Mexican singer that passed away. And, um, and for that, I try to you know, bring this um, musical notes and music coming out of the heart. Um, and again, so uh, the heart, I'm using this as an, an iconographical element uh, with some kind of religious approach, but not necessarily, you know, um, um, like a, um, orthodox religious uh, elements, but uh, more like a 
appealing to the spirituality of the element. So, yeah, and basically these are the words that I have, and also have an, another couple more works. But uh, yeah, so so you're welcome to to visit us too. Thank you so much, Hector, and Anjanette, and Eddie, and Benjamin. We're open from till 8 p.m. tonight, so come on down. We're all masked, and it's great to see the work in person. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.